In this segment, we're going to talk about the sexiest thing in air conditioning, condensate drains. HVAC Shop Talk is brought to you by Beckett. Join their new photo contest at a chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Details in the description. And Yellow Jacket, the new Turbo Recover recovery machine, features a brushless motor and is A2L compatible. While condensate drains are not actually the most sexy things in air conditioning, if you're wondering that, you must be new, I guess. But they do account for quite a bit of issues, and some of the most dramatic issues can be caused by condensate lines. I remember one time at 1.30 a.m. when I was trying to fix a condensate leak at a house whose ceiling was ruined because one of the systems I installed, the pan overflowed with water. And it was a horrible experience and a common experience throughout our trade. So let's go through some best practices and tips about condensate drains that will hopefully improve your life and definitely improve your business. This is an inline float switch. I've used these a lot. I know a lot of you guys have too. In the picture here, it's kind of at a dead end on a piece of PVC because it's being used as a secondary drain. Basically, you have a primary drain coming off a system, and then you'll have a secondary as well, and it just deadheads into a float switch. A lot of times people will do that just to keep the float switch out of the primary line. A lot of times people will use these T-shaped inline float switches on primary drains. I used to use them a lot where they go into a P-trap, and I found that in some cases, not this particular switch, but some of these switches when we have a more gooey environment, there's a lot of aluminum coil issues out there. A lot of you guys know about where slime is created on the coil. I had a system that was aluminum coil made by Nordine that gummed up so bad the switch failed, and that's what led to the overflow on the ceiling I was talking about earlier. You have to be mindful of where you put these switches. I think some of these switches that block a significant part of the drain may be a leading cause in this. That's my opinion. You guys put your opinion in the comments or email me at hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. I definitely think you should be weary of where you place a condensate switch, especially one that blocks a significant part of the condensate tubing. Here's another look at that same scenario I was talking about where you have a condensate switch, the inline switch, but used in the secondary. This way it's out of the primary drain, doesn't block anything, it's sitting in the secondary to prevent overflow into that pan below. The pan below has a secondary drain coming off of it that runs outside, not to divert off topic too much, but when you run a secondary drain outside, typically it'll go out into a soffit, sometimes it'll run all the way to the ground. Where I live, you have to denote the secondary from the primary. We used to have to do that with red tape. You had to put red tape on the end of the secondary so the inspector would know that it was the secondary and not the primary drain. So the homeowner could walk around the house and see which one was dripping. If you saw the secondary dripping, you knew the pan was full and there was an issue and you needed to call your heating and air professional or ignore that and go up in the attic with a shop vac and ignore any real issue that's forming. A few other things we can notice in this picture besides having a good amount of drains there. You have the secondary drain off the pan, which is a good thing to have. You don't have the secondary drain off the unit into the pan. That's something I've seen a lot of times, but you know what? Whenever you have that up in the attic, it's going to be sucking air through that secondary drain all the time for a air handler. For a furnace with a blow-through coil, it's just blowing air out into the attic. Either way, it's an efficiency loss, not that big of a deal. A lot of times that happens with furnaces anyway, but something that should be considered. So here's our primary drain coming through here. We have our P-trap, which is good. We're going to talk about those in a second, into our vent, which is here. The reason why we have this vent is so we don't have vapor lock in the lines in between two sags. Whenever you have a drain line that sags across an attic, there's a chance that you can get the line into vapor lock, which will cause it to drain less well or not at all. And it can cause the pan to actually overflow because air is trapped in between those two pockets of water. The vent piping here allows that air to escape and the drain can drain properly. That being said, fix the sags in the line. You don't want anything like that occurring anyway, but the vent will prevent any issues from cropping up due to a little bit of vapor lock. You do have to be weary though, if you have a shop vac outside cleaning the drain, you're going to be sucking air through that vent until you block it off. So you won't be clearing a P-trap, you'll be just clearing the vent, which should already be clear. Here is a clear P-trap, and what this is, is you have these manufacturers that sell clear P-traps so you can see inside of them. They come with a brush so you can clean them out, which I think is nice. Some of them have flow switches that integrate into them. I don't know about the flow switches because I think they might have the same issue as the inline switch with the slime. 
But the actual clear P-trap, I think, is a really good idea. If you like these P-traps or like the ones with float switches, put in the comments if you've ever had issues with them. And if you haven't, share your trick. Maybe use a condensate tablet. Maybe use some sort of cleaning agent. Let us know how you got it to work. Now I'm looking at a picture of a P-trap coming off an air handler. And this is out of an instruction manual, I think for Goodman, but I'm not positive. And it has some key points in here that we need to adhere to. First, the drain pipe going into the P-trap is two inches higher than exiting the P-trap. That's important. You can't have a running trap because it doesn't function properly. Imagine it. The entire time a system is running, the air is pulling on that water. There's static pressure in the negative pulling on that water as far as an air handler goes. This is not the case with blow-through air handlers or coils on the top of furnaces. It's important that a P-trap is deep enough so you can overcome any negative pressure issues in the trap. This diagram shows a 3-inch minimum which is deep enough to overcome any issues. Although, you guys know as well as I do, if there's issues with airflow, the more deficient and higher the static is on the return side, the more high the static is going to be inside this drain P-trap. This picture also shows it must be a positive liquid seal required at the trap. All that means is there's enough water in the P-trap to prevent air from coming back through the pipe. You don't want gaps there. It dries up in the winter times. So that's why we prime the trap when we start up a system, all that means is we dump water in the trap so it fills up. There's some short and sweet drain tips right there in this segment. If you have any questions or suggestions about what else I could cover on these segments, be sure to let me know in the comments, and I will see each of you on the next one. And God bless each and every one of you.